Why is grandma? grandma. She just made a book about the family. It's, it's a colorful story. Oh boy.
fullness of family life, in the fullness of faith, in the fullness in the trust in our God. Let us take a moment as we begin this Mass and this celebration to pray for John and Moira as they begin their creative life together and ask for all the Lord's spiritual and temporal blessings in their lives. And let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. As we place ourselves in the presence of the that their love may shine forth from this commitment to all family and friends here present and who are not able to make it today. Heavenly Father, bless this covenant in love. Bless this covenant with your grace. Bless this new freedom with children and unity. Bless this new freedom with all that you, that you give us in Jesus' name. And this we ask through him, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. justice toward the children's children and those who keep his covenant. The Lord is kind and
from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. <clears throat> Follow the way of love, even as Christ loved you. He gave himself for us. Defer to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives should be submissive to their husbands, as if to the Lord, because the husband is head of his wife, just as Christ is head of his body in the church, as well as its Savior. As the church submits to Christ, so wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. He gave himself up for her to make her holy, purifying her in the bath of water by the power of the word to present to himself a glorious church, holy and immaculate, without stain or wrinkle or anything of that sort. Husbands should love their wives as they do their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. <clears throat> Observe that no one ever hates his own flesh. No, he nourishes it, is it and makes and takes care of it as Christ cares for the church, as we are members of his body. And for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother <coughs> and shall cling to his wife. And the two shall be made into one. This is a great foreshadowing. I mean that it refers to Christ and the church. In any case, each one should love his wife as he loves himself. The wife, for her part, showing respect for her husband. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, which is the greatest of all the commandments? And Jesus replied, The first is this, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is like it, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. All of the law and the prophets as well are summed up in these two commandments. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. May the words of the gospel wipe away our sins. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> so many things that St. Paul and that Jesus tells us through St. Matthew in the Gospel reading. Um, again, I'm generally at a loss to keep things short, but I will uh, attempt to uh, summarize things in three points. Uh, the first I would say is, what is Paul trying to get at? What's the essence of what St. Uh, Matthew was telling us? What's the essence of what the Lord is telling us about this commitment with, which John and Moira enter into today? And the first, I think, is that everything, everything indeed in terms of love is dependent upon faith. And, and the second thing I think that Paul is trying to tell us is that there's also a need for kindness and that kindness is dependent upon an assumption of the goodness of the other. And, and the third thing that I, I think 
uh, is trying to be said here is that this love always goes beyond itself, goes beyond itself in children, goes beyond itself uh, in, in, in terms of the ideals that we share with one another. So I'd like to just explicate those three points for just a moment, because I think they, they have not only a real, uh, summarize the essence of marriage, but because I think they summarize the essence of John and Moira and the gifts that they give to one another as they embark on this most important commitment today. First faith, the love of marriage, it's a love which brings a kind of joy and a kind of unity, a kind of complementarity and a kind of goodness, a goodness beyond yourself and a goodness for one another. It is a great commitment and it is a great love and it is a great joy. And that commitment, it requires faith. It requires grace. It requires the love of God. And it requires our needing God and expressing our need for God as it's sort of its underlying superstructure. What I mean to say, of course, and what St. Paul and St. Matthew mean to say is that this kind of faith, what it's all about, it's about praying for one another. Yes, that is true. It is about praying for your children. Yes, that is true. It is about praying for the goods that you believe in beyond yourself. That is true. It's about praying with one another, and it is about praying for one another. Because your salvation, the salvation of both of you, are one another's first priority. That is, after all, what this marriage is embarking on. And so that prayer is absolutely essential. But more than that, there is a trust. There is a trust in God. There is a trust that He is there. That He is there sometimes in real times of hardship and in real times of joy. That He is bringing everything to fruition. There's a kind of, uh, there's a nice way of, of, of expressing it. For He has a sort of a prayer sometimes that I use frequently especially when there are tough times, but also when there are times when I know I'm not in control of the good things that are happening to me. I can always say to the Lord, I give up. You take care of it. In a way, there's a real, it's not an abandonment of God. It's an abandonment to God. And what I would say there is that's the trust that knows that God is ever present. That God knows how much you need Him. That God wants to be present to you in your marriage. And as Paul tells us in that letter to the Ephesians, wants more than anything for you to look after one another's salvation. And wants to be there with you in every moment of growth, in every moment of love. Prayer brings detachment. Trust in God brings detachment from the things of this world and keeps us focused on what really matters the love which I will address in a moment. This faith also gives us something to rely on, allows God's grace to work in our death, because Christ plays in 10,000 eyes, in 10,000 limbs not his, to the Father, through the features of people's faces. My first thought today is that faith holding that faith within your hearts, trusting in God with all your heart, trusting in God so much you can really say when the going gets rough, I give up, you take care of it. And you can really say to the Lord, join us in our celebration when children come, when life is lovely indeed, and it will be. That trust that leads to detachment, that prayer, and above all to remember, it is one another's salvation that matters more than anything else. That salvation which will be light for us and light for your children. The second thought I have is a thought about love. Uh, I just was at a talk uh, at the Family Life Conference in, uh, in Canada, in Vancouver, and in it, Dr. Billings gave a talk. And he talked about a poll that he had given to various couples that uh, uh, he had uh, witnessed the marriage of or had just been present to the marriage of in, in many, uh, over many, many years. And, and he asked them, what was the most important thing 
about uh, your spouse that you remember? I mean, what's the most important thing that has held this marriage together all these years? The most important characteristic? And a, a very large percentage answered, uh, they were kind. They were kind to me. And in a way, I guess I would remember that because Paul gives up right at the beginning of his list of the attributes of love. He says, love is patient and love is kind. There's a kind of a gentleness there. There is a kind of an assumption of the other's goodness there. There is a wanting to believe in the other's faith, in the other's goodness, in the other's love, in the other's lovability. There's that desire to see the good, to look for the good in one another. And that, I think, is the ground of kindness. Because if you look at that list of Paul, it could almost be daunting. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is merciful. It does not boast. It does not grow angry. Indeed, it does not rejoice in what is bad, but rejoices in what is good. It hopes all, knows all, endures all. You sort of look at that and go, whoa, who can do this? We can struggle towards it. We can struggle towards it in faith and in prayer. We can struggle towards it with one another in this church. And we can struggle towards it by looking for the good in one another, by looking for the kindness of one another, by looking for the loveliness of the presence of one another. You are about to embark on a commitment which sets up one another as your number one priority, at least in human terms. And in that commitment, it is absolutely essential to be patient, to be kind, to not grow angry, to have that disposition to see the good news in one another. Many of you have heard me say this before, but it bears repeating. You cannot look for the good news and the bad news in one another simultaneously. If you're looking for the good news, if you're looking for the little good things and the great good things, if you're looking for the presence of the other and the kindness of the other, if you're looking for the ideals and the faith and the mystery of the other, it's almost impossible to see the bad news. Alternatively, the opposite is also the case. When we are looking for the bad news in one another, what is irritating or what is insensitive or what is bothering us, notice how it is almost impossible to see the good news. It's all a matter of attitude. I think that's what Paul is trying to tell us. I think that's what the Lord is trying to tell us. It is a matter of attitude to see the good news in one another, for that will wipe out that vision of the bad news. But to remember, too, that seeing the bad news will wipe out the vision of the good news. Kindness, that is what is important. Patience, that is what is important. Not growing angry or boastful, it is important. But above all, to begin by looking for the good news in one another. The third point simply concerns family. It concerns this. There's an old adage that love always goes beyond itself. That somehow the overflowing love, right, it just needs to do a good beyond itself. It needs to find a good for someone else. It needs to, in a way, we need to make a difference to someone or something beyond ourselves. And all love is characterized by that need within us to do something beyond ourselves, to make a difference to someone beyond ourselves. And we know the power of that adage. We know that if we are looking for the good beyond ourselves, if we are looking to make a difference to someone or something beyond ourselves, we know that we will not play that insane game of comparing ourselves to others, that insanity of one's upsmanship, that insanity of win, lose, draw, that goes nowhere. We know in our Christian faith and we know in our lives, we know in our experience that when we try to make a difference to someone or something beyond ourselves, that game, that comparison game goes away. The one thing I know today is you embark on a commitment which is so powerful, so great in magnitude, that you, you will want to exercise that right, to make a difference, 
to do the good for one another in your lives. But not just the good for one another, but together to do the good beyond yourselves. The bond you enter into today is just a bond of love and unity blessed by the Lord that wants to go beyond the ourselves, beyond the us. And one way of doing that, of course, is with children who magnify that love right back into your own marital relationship. Magnify it so powerfully that it strengthens that union that you might go out beyond yourselves and do even greater good. What I mean to say then is the family and the beyond the family, the family that literally shares its love, its faith with all those beyond us, your friends and your families, and even strangers who can come to you for help. Three things I would remember on this day. Three things I think which Paul would want to use as the underlying foundation of the commitment that you embark on. Have faith. Pray for one another. Pray with one another. Keep one another's salvation in the forefront of your minds. Secondly, be kind to one another. Let your kindness for one another be the shining moment of your love and your commitment throughout your marriage. And remember that that kindness, along with the patience, along with the mercy, along with the forgiveness, depends so very much on looking for the good news in one another. And finally, remember this, that your family will magnify your love back to you. Your children will magnify your love back to you. And your family's moving out to do the good beyond yourselves, to make a difference to someone or something beyond yourselves will make a difference. John and Moira, I know you personally. I know your faith. I know your determination to look for the good news in one another. I know your determination to be committed in your kindness to one another forever. And I know your determination to provide for a family, to constitute a family, which is an open door to all of us here, and an open door beyond yourself, an open door to children, and an open door to that love. Pray now that you may take those talents and bring them to fruition. here in faith to declare your permanent committed love for one another in marriage. This consecration of your lives began at your baptism and now the Lord affords a new grace through marriage to bring your commitment to him to fruition and your commitment to one another to fruition in him. I therefore on behalf of this community on behalf of Christ ask you to declare your intention. Have you come here freely and without any reservation to give yourselves to one another in marriage? We have. Do you promise to love and honor one another as husband and wife for the rest of your lives? We do. Will you accept children lovingly from God and bring them up in accordance with the love of Christ and the law of the church. We will. You have declared your intentions before God and this community. I therefore ask you to join your right hands 
and declare your consent. Hi, John. Take you, Moira, to be my wife. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. I will love and honor you all the days of my life. Hi, Moira. Take you, John, to be my husband. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you all the days of my life. You have declared your consent before God and this community. I now declare what God has joined. Let no one separate. Ask the ring bearer to come up, please. <coughs> Heavenly Father, bless this water. Send your Holy Spirit upon it, that it may be a sign of John's and Moira's love and fidelity for one another. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, bless these rings as a sign of their love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I to take this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. pray. Heavenly Father, bless your servants, John and Moira. Bring their committed love to one another in fruition to fruition in your eternity. Grant them all the grace that they need to bring this commitment to its fullness in you. And this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 And let us bring our prayers of petition to the Father in confidence. First of all today, let us pray for John and Moira. Let us pray for their lives together with one another, for lives of commitment, for lives of love, for lives of kindness, for lives of faith, for lives that shine forth from themselves. For John and for Moira, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us also pray, too, for the families of John and Moira, those here present and those who cannot make it. That the Lord may bless them through John and Moira's love and faith. For them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray, too, for all of the friends of John and Moira that the Lord may bless them to their new unity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray, too, for all the deceased in their families and among their friends, that the Lord may bless them in his eternity and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all of our intentions and petitions within our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you hear these prayers, the prayers within our hearts that go unmentioned, and the prayers of your universal church. Grant all of them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. 
Now have we gifts, please. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this morning walk. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. to bring the grace of the sacrament of marriage into the lives of John and Moira. Help us all to benefit from this great love, and this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. He is the Word through whom you made the universe, the Savior you sent to redeem us. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake, he opened his arms on the cross, put an end to death, and revealed the resurrection. In this, he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy future. And so we join the angels and saints in proclaiming your glory as we stand. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna.
was given unto to death. A death he freely accepted. He took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. And when supper was ended, he took the cup. And again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Bless your servants, John and Mary. Grant them the grace of this sacrament. Grant them the grace of patience in love. Grant them all that they need spiritually.
him to be a good husband and a good father. Help him to know your will in his life and to cherish his mind always as he cherishes it in cherishes himself. Bless your servant Moira. Help her to be a good wife and a good mother. Grant her understanding and compassion. Grant her the grace to know your will in her life, that she may cherish her husband, John, as she cherishes herself. Heavenly Father, bless them now. Bring them to the fullness of eternity in you. Help them to seek one another's salvation till they reach that salvation in Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. The Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. The Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. And look. Is the Lamb of God, the one who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we to be called to his faith. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. And may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us all together into life everlasting. wishing, all those uh, Catholics wishing to receive Holy Communion, uh, we will uh, have it uh, at the, uh, the end of the uh, center aisle here after our Holy Communion to the uh,
announcement. Uh, the reception will actually, uh, the doors to the back will be closed, and the reception will be uh, off to the, to the right here, so we'll go through the side doors. And uh, that uh, I should get you uh, there in good stead. So let us stand and pray. Father in heaven, through this sacrament, we have seen John and Moira joined in the sacrament of marriage. You bestow grace on them, for you love them as you love your church. Bless them now and forever. And this we ask in Christ. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord.